Welcome to the Tepper School of Business Multimedia Series. For more information on the Tepper School at Carnegie Mellon, please visit us at www.tepper.cmu.edu slash multimedia. And now, here's your selected video. The latest news has the Arab Emirates buying a piece of Citibank, uh, putting up some billions of dollars. That's really not a surprise since we spend about $500 billion a year to import oil. We're actually giving away enough money to buy the U.S. economy. We're doing that because we're being uh, completely foolish about what it is we do with respect to oil. I want to talk about that now, to talk about our policies. Uh, in 2003, the price of oil was about $32 a barrel. We imported 11.2 million barrels a day and we spent a total of $131 billion that year. In 2007, we import 1.3 million barrels a day more than that. The price is now hovering in the mid $90, and we're spending almost $500 billion a year. This difference of $300 billion a year is a really non-trivial difference. Uh, if we had that money back, if we'd been able to keep the price of oil at $32, we'd have enough money to uh, uh, completely get rid of the uh, deficit of the federal government, or we could uh, get rid of most of our balance of payments deficit, or we could fund programs like uh, uh, the state's children uh, health initiative program over about 500 times, right? That is that we are actually giving away our national wealth, and we're doing so foolishly by the amount of oil that we uh, purchase. Uh, in the future, if we keep on doing what we're doing right now, which is to purchase more oil every day, I figure that by about 2010, we'll be importing 13 and a half million barrels a day. That will cost us just under a trillion dollars a year, a trillion dollars a year. At that point, I expect that there will be a gold rush to buy uh, companies in the United States. Indeed, we may put one of our states up for, for sale uh, at those kinds of prices. We're being absolutely foolish, and we've got to stop this. Our presidential candidates are actually pandering to voters right now when they talk about the situation. They're telling us on the Republican side that we simply need to find, find more oil and gas. On the Democratic side, they're telling us that we need to do some things about fuel economy standards for cars and trucks those aren't going to get us there. Uh, we need to take more action. We need to realize the, the amount of mistake that we're actually making in what it is that we do. Our, our whole foreign policy since uh, World War II has been aimed toward securing a supply of cheap oil into the United States. In doing that, we've backed all kinds of corrupt dictators. We've had our foreign policy depend completely on those aims. And we're fighting our second war in the Persian Gulf now in order to sustain that supply of oil. This is really crazy. We are the largest importer of oil in the world. China is the second largest importer. They import half of what it is we do. If we're going to do something about the world's supply of oil, if we're going to do something about how much we pay, we're going to have to stop pointing fingers at China and India and start looking in the mirror. It is we who are the determinants of our future, not China and India. What we have to do is to stop being ignorant victims. We're going to have to start realizing that the price of oil is not $90 a barrel or $100 a barrel. It's actually more like $300 to $500 a barrel. If you compare today with 2002, and we then take a look at the amount of, of money that we're spending, we're buying about uh, 6 uh, billion barrels of oil more a year, and that comes out to uh, more than $400 a barrel for what it is that we're buying. We have to understand that oil costs us a lot more than the current market price. Uh, so what are we going to do? We have to realize that uh, oil is more expensive and that the price of gasoline is more expensive than what we're paying right now. Rather than eking out uh, small rises uh, every month, uh, every year uh, in the price of oil, we have to understand that we want to look forward to what the real price of oil is and do something about it now. Europe and Japan currently price gasoline at about $7 a gallon. I figure that's probably about right. At $7 a barrel, or sorry, at $7 a gallon, 
uh, we would start reducing our demand for oil. We wouldn't have to have Congress tell us that we need more stringent fuel economy standards. Consumers would go out and they'd buy those vehicles. And so we, we don't have to do a lot of stuff with more government regulation. All we have to do is have a price that justifies that. Uh, if we uh, then have this $7 uh, uh, dollar a gallon price, uh, that is a $4 a gallon tax on gasoline, what would that do to the economy? Well, it would raise about $500 billion a year in new taxes. Uh, if you had $500 billion a year, probably uh, what most economists would recommend is that you get rid of the payroll tax. It is terribly regressive and it is uh, uh, very harmful to the economy. If we could get rid of that, we would really boost the economy. And if we got rid of the payroll tax on the first $20,000 uh, worth of income, the poor would actually be better off. They would have more money uh, to uh, spend in their lives than they'd have to pay for the additional uh, price of gasoline. And so by doing something intelligent about our uh, energy policy, we would also be something, doing something intelligent about uh, getting our economy out of this recession that we seem to be going into. Uh, if we now uh, uh, take a look at this, there's one more thing that we could do, and that is currently when you buy a new car, you, you, you're told what the fuel economy of that car is. I've got a different suggestion. Why don't we put on the uh, sticker of the car how much that uh, car is going to use over its lifetime of 150,000 miles. If you were buying a, a large SUV that got 15 miles per gallon, then over 150,000 miles, you'd have to buy 10,000 gallons of gasoline. At $7 a gallon, that's $70,000. That's enough to make you uh, think. If instead you bought a Prius at 50 miles per gallon, you'd have to buy about 3,000 gallons of gasoline over its lifetime. The difference between those two, uh, that is 7,000 gallons at $7 a gallon, is $49,000. That's enough to send your kid to college, right? And I think that those kinds of marketplace signals would replace any need for regulation. They would get us to go in exactly the right direction. I have this hope. This hope is that we will begin to think seriously about our energy policy, that we'll begin to do something about our, our imports of petroleum. Uh, and in doing that, I think we would do the best thing we can to resolve this international terrorism issue that faces us. Uh, if we stop sp sending this $500 billion a year overseas to buy uh, oil, then uh, we would be starving the terrorists. Uh, I have this dream. This dream is that we would force Osama bin Laden to start having bake sales in order to finance his terrorism. That's what it is we need to do. That's what the oil producing countries have been telling us for a long time to do. It's time to start doing it now. Let's have this gasoline tax. Let's bankrupt the terrorists, not the USA. Thanks for your attention.